Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, let's begin with a word of prayer. Uh, let me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the truth of your word. Father, we thank you that your word is living, it is powerful, it is working in us. Father God, even as we uh, take time to study your word this morning, we pray that we will encounter you in a, in a fresh and a new way, oh God. Father, be uh, glorified in and through Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So in the past class, we started with the workings or the methods that Satan uses to um, attack. Okay, attack is a big word, uh, but to interfere you know, in, in the lives of uh, people. And we saw that he will try to up his influence. And we have to be very, very careful to deal with it in the lowest stage or the lowest level possible. There are a couple of common methods uh, that he has used time and again. If we understand these methods, then it becomes easy for us also to, uh, to overcome it. So temptation is the basic technique that he uses against people. We saw that temptation is something that happens in the area of the mind. He can uh, work the way he worked in Eve's temptation where uh, you know he tries to affect us through the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh uh, and also the pride of life uh, but you know we can say no to what satan is doing now we will today try and understand the progression of temptation in the mind it's not only temptation but any uh, wrong thought process can become stronger uh, in the same pattern. Okay? So let's look at a passage. This is in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 to 6. So if anybody has the mic right next to you, please read into it. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 to 6. So it is the process in which... Um, you know, temptation takes over our minds. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down the strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity, to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Okay, that's wonderful. Let's also read from James chapter 1, verses 13 to 16. Then we will discuss. 13 to. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived my beloved brethren. Okay, so we read two passages of scripture. The, uh, I'll take up the second passage first. So the second passage says that um, temptation, it's not from God. So for us to say when we are going through a temptation that God is testing me uh, through this temptation would be wrong because we've already seen that God does not tempt anyone. But where does temptation come from? Uh, in what James is saying, he's saying it comes from within. We have certain desires, okay, on which the enemy can, you know, they, he can play it up. And uh, when we start yielding to it, what happens? It can lead to when desire has 
conceived it gives birth to sin he says so we let that desire uh, stay and grow within us till it comes to a place where you know we act it out in some way or it is released in some way and then you know sin happens uh, through us and uh, through sin again what happens you know, it will lead to destruction so there is a progression again you know, that is taking place but it starts with temptation temptation not originating from god but from the enemy and uh, the important thing that satan needs is our desire so from our desire the temptation will progress okay so that is something we have seen now going back to that first passage which we read in second corinthians 10 verses 3 through 6 now, there are certain terms used there uh, terms like imaginations uh, reasoning argument you know bringing every thought captive uh, stronghold so you have uh, you have things mentioned there which have to do with the mind now for us to go deeply into this i would encourage us to read a publication by the name of uh, the conquest of the mind it's available you can either get it as a pdf version from the book section on our website uh, or simply go to apcwo.org forward slash books and you can download it the conquest of the mind it explains this progression very uh, in a detailed manner but i'm just going to touch on it okay so there is a progression that can take place in our mind and uh, as we've said satan initiates the temptation okay but we have to agree with it in the last class you recall we saw jesus's statement where he said that uh, satan he has nothing in me so when there is nothing in us to uh, which aligns to satan and his views then it's fine the temptation will not work but if we have something in us like a desire or uh, a thought that says yeah it's okay you're agreeing with satan then it leads to this progression so what is the progression it's here in our notes thoughts imaginations reasoning or argument stronghold so let's begin with a thought okay uh, a simple thought so there can be thoughts in our minds which are not in agreement to the word of god and many times satan will plant those thoughts uh, let's say uh, you remember we talked about uh, uh, alcohol <laughs> Okay, now that's a strong example, but then I'm just sharing it over here. Uh, so if, let's say, a young person, he's taught about alcohol and, all, hey, it's not good for you, uh, and it, it, being addicted to it will lead you to all kinds of destructive behavior. So he knows this reality, but he has a thought in his mind. I'm young. You know, young people experience everything, so why can't I experience it? So that's the thought. The initial thought that uh, the enemy may put in his mind like hey just try it once it's not a problem that's the thought it's just a single thought okay now if he doesn't deal with it then and there if he's a strong believer in the word he will take out the weapon of god's word you know the the sword of the spirit and uh, he can quote a couple of scriptures you know how proverbs says that uh, uh, wine is a brawler you know, nobody who who um, goes in in these ways will will uh, like basically there'll be a lot of destruction right you will you are unwise if if you uh, drink right so you, you would probably quote uh, passages like that or uh, don't be drunk with wine but be filled with the spirit as um, you know paul wrote to the churches so he would quote these scriptures and overcome the enemy at the first step which is a thought, a simple thought. Now, if it is not dealt with at that level, what happens? It may move to the next level. So that would be imaginations. Now, how does it work? The person may just imagine themselves um, going and hanging out with their friends and nothing 
it, it's just in their imagination. They haven't even done anything right now. So they're just imagining, oh, a good evening, and I'm just going, it's OK, it's fine. So they're painting pictures in their mind of actually engaging in action. Uh, and that happens to our mind. That's the way our mind is designed. If you don't deal with uh, the wrong thoughts, it will eventually lead to imagination. And that happens even to the right thoughts, isn't it? Uh, you think of the good things, and then you begin to imagine, oh, yeah, I'm studying. I'm in that college. I'm doing well. So imagination is the next level. Now, if the person doesn't deal with it at the level of the imagination, where you go and you know you you bind every wrong thought, you quote the scriptures, and you know you uh, study the word to see, hey, is it really beneficial or not? If they don't do all those things, then it progresses further. It goes to the next level, which is reasoning and argument maybe their conscience or their renewed mind will tell them no it's not good for you uh, it, this is not a good testimony so many things the renewed mind will say but the the unrenewed mind can come up with arguments arguments are something like hey i read a research in which it says oh you should have red wine every day it's good for your heart like basically justification so you, you come up with justification, reasoning, arguments. Arguments, oh, Jesus, what was his first miracle? He turned water into wine. So if God can turn water into wine, what is the problem? You know. So what's happening? You know the truth, but then you know how to uh, argue and uh, come up with reasonings. Isn't it? Or uh, in the communion, God said, uh, you know, they served in the early church, they served wine. They served bread. Why did God choose wine to serve? Nothing is wrong. You know, so justification. So in somebody's head, now the imagination is turning into arguments where we know how to justify ourselves. There's nothing wrong. Where in the Bible does it say, uh, don't drink? It only says, don't get drunk. So I'm not getting drunk. You know, there are many ways of arguing or to say oh uh, in you know sometimes in in weddings without our knowledge you know, they they may just serve something uh, maybe it's real wine also <laughs> by mistake you you drink it in some weddings they do that uh, but suppose i'm just saying suppose uh, let's say there was a church wedding and um, they served wine and this young person saw their pastor drinking it even pastor drank it so what's the problem so what's happening imagination arguments reasonings so the mind is going to another place where we are able to justify the wrong thing that we want to do this is just an example okay i'm, I'm just using alcohol because uh, it, it's easier to explain now now what happens if the person still doesn't deal with the reasonings with the truth of god's word and renew their minds then it goes to the next level. What is that? It's called as a stronghold. Now, we all uh, know what strongholds are. Strongholds are fortresses. Now, some of our older, uh, olden kings and rulers, they have built structures around cities, which are known as fortresses. It's very difficult to penetrate. People cannot enter. People cannot come out. That is a fortress for protection. It was built you know, many years ago. That was their way of protecting. So stronghold is like that. Something which is very strong and difficult to break. That's the point. So in our minds, um, these thoughts settle down in a very strong way. Now, if you know cement, when people are mixing cement and they're putting it, it's so soft, like you're working with it and all. But then it has a setting time. So after it is set, do you think you can rework it? Or you don't want the way it looks. You, you want to rework it and put it in another way. It doesn't happen. Once it sets, it's very hard. You have to like break it and chip it off. OK? Stronghold is like that. Once it is set in our mind, I'm not doing anything wrong. You know, you move on to self-deception, where the person is convinced that there's nothing wrong. What did I do wrong? I didn't do anything wrong. Okay, so that, then we have come to the place of stronghold. Now, strongholds are very dangerous, especially for believers, because strongholds 
act as a place where demons can come and hide. So they use it as a fortress for them. They stay there. And that is why we say people are demonized. A believer cannot be possessed. Because who stays in our spirit? The Holy Spirit. Don't you know that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit? So Holy Spirit is living in my spirit. But what's happening? My mind is not renewed. My mind has strongholds. Those strongholds are now the home for demonic spirits. So a believer is behaving badly. A believer has attitudes and uh, you know you can't even imagine this person is a believer but yeah they can be a believer but a very carnal believer with strongholds demonization so that's how it works so having understood these things uh, what does it lead to it leads us to a place where we have to recognize even one ungodly thought in my mind should not be allowed that's what second corinthians 10 says it says Pulling down every thought and imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So if I find one thought in my mind which is not correct, that in itself is dangerous. I have to bring it down. Pull down every thought. Every, taking every thought captive. So how should the mind of a believer be? Renewed mind. Renewed mind. That is when, like Romans 12 says, right? Then we can prove the uh, you know the good and acceptable will of God when we are transformed by the renewing of our minds. But when we have an unrenewed mind, sorry, it's very difficult to live a godly life because we have this progression in our minds where imagination, reasoning, argument, strongholds, and it shows in our life the way we are when it comes to many temptations i just simply used alcohol but it could be lust it could be money you know it could be uh, so many things pride uh, jealousy so many things uh, so that's how this progression of temptation works but we can overcome it shan you had a question i thought i saw you raising your hand hmm. Uh, yeah, please use the mic. Uh, my question was like, um, at, when you come to reasoning and arguments, oh. like, is yeah. that when the person living in denial, can you call that? But then you already covered in strongholds. Yeah. yeah, correct. Strongholds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's when you start to live in denial. Right. Yeah. So they go into denial or uh, you may even want to call it uh, deception at some point where, uh, though everyone around is understanding that this is not good for you, that person is not understanding because they are convinced. Okay, so those are the dangers of uh, yielding to temptation. And Satan knows if if he can, uh, if he finds a believer who's agreeing with his promptings, he knows he can lead them into uh, the stronghold place and stronghold he can keep them captive. But we have to do the opposite. Every thought we have to take it captive, pull it down. Wrong thought pull it down okay uh, uh, 1 corinthians 10 13 it says no temptation has overtaken you uh, but that which is common to man okay so god will not let you go through anything which is too much for you to handle too much for me to handle so god is gracious and also we see that jesus he was tempted in every way yet without sin that's what uh, you know uh, we, we are told about Jesus. And because of that, he has become a very compassionate high priest to us because he can sympathize with our weaknesses. And uh, one more beautiful thing is we can go boldly into his presence to ask for mercy and grace. We can go to the throne of grace. So we may be going through a temptation. Sometimes it's very difficult. But in those moments, we may feel very unworthy. Like, how could I... I'm a believer and you know, how could I uh, yield to what Satan is saying and all that. But instead of condemning ourselves, we can go to God and say, God, you know, I'm sorry. Uh, I know that you understand. I, I need your forgiveness. I need your mercy. I need your strength. And so we can find that uh, deliverance, forgiveness and strength out of 
temptation. Uh, but here, the point we want to make is that temptation is a method, or if you if you want to call it a technique, which Satan uses through one thought. He can plant in our minds, and if we are not careful, that can lead into all these things. Okay, imagination, reasoning, and stronghold. But uh, we can overcome, like Jesus. How did Jesus overcome? How was his first and best method of overcoming temptation? Word of God. It is written. Okay. Every time Satan put a thought, come worship me. No, it is written that you will worship only the Lord your God. Or uh, Satan put a thought in Jesus' his mind. You jump from the, the uh, you know, the top of the temple uh, because Satan is also using God's word because it says that God will protect you with his angels. So twisting the word, he knows very well. Okay, Which is why we should understand the word properly. Otherwise, word is there, but it is twisted. That's how Satan works. But Jesus said, no, you will not test the Lord your God. So when you know the word, when you understand the word, when you remember the word, use the word, he has no chance. In our lives that's the best way to overcome temptation now when jesus was tempted to not go to the cross what did he do what did he do he was under high pressure before he was in gethsemane okay let me give you another clue what did jesus do in gethsemane prayer so another way to overcome temptation is prayer just spend a lot of time in prayer Okay, when Jesus felt he couldn't, Lord, take away this cup, he was in that place. But he said, Okay, let me pray. He also asked his, his uh, friends, his disciples to pray. Unfortunately, they slept off. Okay, but there is power in prayer. We can pray to overcome the suggestions of the enemy. So these are ways in which we can overcome. <laughs> now, the second technique okay we have uh, a comment here i'll just uh, quickly read it so prince is saying as believers we are the temple of god and it's holy spirit who dwells in us but as we talk when a believer has strongholds uh, he or she will be demonized uh, but how can demons come and take place when holy spirit is dwelling in oneself because holy spirit and demons can't go hand in hand my question is how can holy spirit and demons both can dwell in believer. Okay. Yeah, I know it sounds very schizophrenic, right? Like this God is saying, you've seen those cartoons. You will have God is selling, don't do this. And the devil is saying, no, you do this. Uh, everything going on inside one person. Uh, so Prince will answer your question. Um, it's coming up. Uh, okay. It's coming up just a little later in... in uh, Intrusion. Okay, the third section here. So let me take up intrusion first, uh, and you will understand. So I said temptation is one one way. Uh, another way would be intrusion. It's number three in our notes. Intrusion is illegal entrance. Illegal. Okay, or you could call it unlawful access. Now, if this compound or this land has been officially given to a certain person, uh, anyone else coming in and trying to build on this land is illegal, unlawful. Now, in the same way, what Satan tries to do in the lives of believers is he knows what is legal. He knows covenant. Okay, Covenant says we are healed. Covenant says we are blessed. Covenant says God is our provider. No, covenant says we have peace. So covenant says a lot of things. God has promised us many things. The cross has given us many blessings. But what will he do? He knows legally for the believer this is what is valid. But he will try to come in and illegally occupy okay, and do the opposite so what are what is the opposite he will do bring strife confusion in the place of peace uh, 
uh, bring uh, oppression you know in the place of freedom uh, bring sickness and disease in the place of health and wholeness so he will he loves to do that illegal work which is why we say you know sometimes we we when we pray or uh, jesus we read about jesus in matthew chapter 8 peter's mother in law was sick what did jesus do did he say fever please go away politely you know i request you kindly leave no we read he rebuked the fever because he jesus is understanding power authority covenant and he says it, it's not right you know and similarly luke chapter 13 there's a woman she's bound she's the daughter of abraham how can she be bound cast out that spirit so there's a sense of militancy that jesus has because hey devil what you're doing is illegal how dare you do it rebuke that is why rebuke you know in hindi i used to always wonder what is rebuke dantna you you don't you don't scold somebody who's doing a good thing you only scold somebody who's doing the wrong thing so that is why we have a rebuke because he's an intruder he likes to come in illegally now to answer prince's question uh, you know jesus uh, jesus said right in john 10 10 uh, I, uh, like in that passage he talks about him being the good shepherd laying down his life for the sheep protect protecting the sheep and he says I've come that you may have life and have it in abundance. But the thief comes to steal, kill, destroy. All illegal activity. To take away, to rob us. That's why Satan comes. So he is an intruder. Okay, no thief who comes to anybody's house, do they give you a, a check and uh, you know some gifts <laughs> and make you richer? And you're like, wow, they came to my house. How, how wonderful. Never. They come to only subtract, take away, destroy, right? create calamity. So that is Satan's job. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Now, we have to ask the question, okay, uh, that how is it that he can enter? So sometimes he tries to enter forcefully. Okay, and we have to evict him. That's when we have to pray. We have to confess the word. Um, we have to rebuke. We have to bind, you know, do all those spiritual warfare activity. But sometimes what he does is he finds a back door open. That is easy for him. Anyway, he's trying to get in to bring all the calamity into our lives. Now, if he sees, oh, here is a wonderful believer, church going, you know, tongue talking believer, but they have a weakness. You know, they have a weakness for, let's say, Simply, some examples I'm saying, gossip. They have a weakness for, uh, uh, you know, just pride and not respecting leaders. Something. He finds some weakness in a believer. Now, that is an open, for, open door for him. It's a crack in the wall. So nobody is there to stop him. He can easily come in. Now, Paul calls it, you know, don't give the devil any place. Ephesians 4.27 or uh, in other uh, versions, it says foothold, access. Don't give the devil any access. So to answer your question, Prince, how can demons stay and Holy Spirit also? If they have access, they can come in. So already we said that when a believer does not deal with sin in their lives, the Holy Spirit will convict us. It's best to respond immediately. As believers, let's take for example, um, maybe God is convicting me about the way I'm handling money. Okay, uh, I don't yield to the voice. What happens is my heart gets harder and harder and harder and harder and harder. Though Holy Spirit is speaking to me, I'm moving in that path of stronghold. Okay, and it's like when that sin is not dealt. I'm giving Satan access. I'm giving demons access. So with my wrong attitude, demons can come in. Am I a believer? Yes. But is it possible for me to be demonized? Yes. So that's how, Prince, I hope you're, you got your answer. So both Satan, demons, and Holy Spirit 
can dwell you know in in a believer in that sense so in strongholds demons can stay but in the spirit of a believer holy spirit will stay yeah all right uh, so that is about intrusion so what should we do uh, about this intruder even apostle peter he says um, you know like be vigilant be alert be vigilant because the adversary the devil he's like a roaring lion he's waiting to see whom he can devour right so that is his thing he loves to do illegal things and bring it on our lives so we have to be very careful uh, and the bible also says resist the devil stop him he he has no legal access today if we find somebody trying to enter into our campus will we keep quiet no we'll tell them sorry you have no rights to take over so in the same way when it comes to our uh, spiritual spiritual inheritance or blessings we have to stop the devil okay um resist the devil but you know one more wonderful thing in that passage james chapter 4 verse 7 it says uh, resist the devil and he will flee from you but before that it actually says submit to god sometimes what happens to believers we are only binding the devil cursing the devil rebuking the devil 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 you know we are fighting against very hard against the devil but our life is not submitted to god full of open doors full of footholds you know full of cracks so from the back door nicely demons are entering okay we are not surrendered to god but we are using spiritual authority so uh, it's very beautiful once i heard pastor say this our level of authority is based on our level of submission how much i am submitted to god that much authority i can use see when i fight against the devil if i am submitted to god in that area he cannot open his mouth because he knows oh this person they have set it right in the matters of whatever money or lust or pride anything they are obedient to god in this area so i cannot point a finger at them so our level of authority will depend on our level of submission so yes resist the devil he will flee from you but first submit to god so our spiritual warfare starts where shooting at the devil all the time no that is step 2 first is submit submit to god resist the devil then we will be very effective in our spiritual warfare okay so intrusion is another way in which he works uh, so we should not let him intrude intimidation this is the second one in our notes here uh, and intimidation i explained the other day intimidation is uh, making one fear okay like just now we saw uh, first peter chapter 5 that uh, our adversary the devil is like a roaring lion so when we see a lion what happens oh we get scared we like oh my goodness don't even go there you know if a lion roars uh, we are like it's so powerful it's scary but notice even in that verse it says he is like a roaring lion so whether he can damage our lives or not he will pretend that hey i'm going to damage okay i'm going to do this i'm going to destroy you then what does it create intimidation fear anxiety and when we get scared what happens you know we we don't resist him effectively we we give in okay so that's another way that satan works he tries to scare the believers um you remember in acts uh, all the believers they they go and preach they go and plant churches and at that time they have lot of resistance authorities they come and they say if you ever preach in the name of jesus you know stop preaching in jesus name uh, so what is that all that is intimidation scaring us from doing the 
right thing. Satan loves to do that, to scare us. That if you don't do this, you wait and see what I'm going to do. So unfortunately for a lot of believers, they lose the battle because of intimidation. They never even take a step. They're like, oh, I'm so scared. You know, what if I fail? What if this happened? What if, what if, what if? Not doing anything. <laughs> you know, how will you know if you don't face it? If we yield to intimidation, we will never overcome the devil. Because basically, he's pretending like, I'm very strong. You can't do anything. So that is another tactic which he uses. Are you all awake, alive? <laughs> yeah? OK, great. So then we will move on. Uh, let's go to uh, chapter 4 here. Uh, sorry, the point 4 here, which is opposition. Okay, so Satan's next technique is opposing. So Paul writes to the Thessalonian church. He says, look, I wanted to come to you. I wanted to meet you. But you know what Satan did? He tried to stop me. He tried to oppose. He tried to create you know, difficulties. Now, when we read about different places also where Paul went to do ministry, he faced a lot of opposition. Sometimes, as believers, we feel, ha, huh, we, will, we will serve God. Wherever we go, it's going, everybody will accept us. It's going to be amazing, right? But does it work like that? It may not. Because time to time, Satan will try to create some confusion, some opposition. If you're doing the work for God in the right way also, he'll try to come. Create something. Come on, let's stop this person. Did he try to stop Jesus? Yeah. Jesus did miracles and all. But think about this. People had such a opposite response. Like that uh, pigs, no? That day we had that discussion about pigs. So demons are cast out of the man. We will think, oh, they might give, they might throw a party for Jesus that this man is set free. But what they tell, what do they tell Jesus? Please leave our city. Jesus, you're affecting our business. How sad. But that is the opposition that Jesus faced. See, Satan is very good at this. He'll try to create opposition to try and stop us from doing what God wants to do. So we have to be aware of that. Uh, and there can be uh, times. So we have to uh, have, we have to use our authority when it comes to opposition. Remember we said we have the keys of the kingdom to bind, to lose. So if we are facing opposition from a certain kind of spirits, we just say, hey, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I release, you know. Whatever authority God has given, I release the power of God. Or the other thing is, when opposition is coming from the devil, uh, we need to use our wisdom. Okay, devil, is this how you're going to do? Let me do that. Okay, I'll just give you one small example. Okay, for church, uh, like for North Church, now the timings have changed, but uh, we used to go very early uh, in the morning. So I would notice in the early days, I would notice that uh, in the morning when we are getting ready, something or the other will go wrong, you know, like the pal went. So now how to iron my clothes or uh, something, something, something. I forgot the charger for the for the laptop. They have to do PowerPoint over there. You know, I'll go there and I'll be like, oh, no, I left the charger. Then another person has to go there. Bring the... so, so many things were going wrong. So I thought, Lord, what is this? You know, sometimes what believers do, they'll say, the devil, I know the devil doesn't want me to go to church. That is why all this is happening. But you know, don't blame the devil for everything. Okay. Uh, yes, sometimes he will oppose. That is a reality. But every time saying, oh, devil is attacking me. Um, or people also say, I started doing ministry and many things are going wrong in my life. Have you heard that? Because they feel... Now the devil will try to attack me more. See, as long as we're living in the world, that's his job. Whether you're doing ministry or not doing ministry, yes, of course, when we are trying to do ministry, he knows maybe 
he'll target little more that that is there because uh, the scriptures say uh, you know you strike the shepherd and the sheep will be uh, scattered so he knows that if he can target a leader it's a lot more beneficial for him but having said that god has given us wisdom okay so we can become smarter than the devil okay come on let's plan better so uh, i've gone a little crazy in this area that you know i pack my bag i keep everything sometimes I, i even put the water in the water bottle and keep it in the car because otherwise in the morning i forget there'll be like uh, pastor please bring that form bring that key there'll be some thousand things which you have to take and go one thing if you forget you know you go so far and so i'm just saying instead of blaming the devil that he's opposing me he's opposing me we can use our wisdom okay so maybe we can plan better we can uh, organize better we can have some backup ha huh? if papa and doesn't work okay fine we'll do this right so oh devil you're smart i'm smarter than you so just try to gain god's wisdom to overcome the devil okay we can overcome by spiritual warfare but also wisdom and pastor has given a wonderful um uh, he has written out his dream and he has uh, interpreted that dream also i encourage you to read that in point number 4 in your notes uh, where you know in his dream he felt that many many uh, strategies of the devil were attacking him but each time god gave him a a new way to tackle the enemy and finally when he prayed for the interpretation of the dream he got those passages where it says that the cross is the wisdom and the power of god satan thought he has defeated jesus by nailing him to the cross but god's wisdom and power is the cross which he could not understand right so god can give us his wisdom for us to overcome the opposition of the devil so these are all ways in which satan will try to uh, affect us so what we'll do is in the next class we'll try and complete the remaining methods uh, i'll pause right now to just check if there's anything that you want to um, clarify further mm-hmm. exact meaning okay and what does it mean oh okay okay it's a more severe and a serious thing rebuke okay so rebuke is not just scold in the hindi language he's he's telling us that another word is used for rebuke where uh, somebody uh, is you know somebody how do you say it huh yeah or tell them that you know they they do they are unworthy like uh, so uh, sort of uh, assert that they are unworthy or they don't have the right to do what they are doing so that is that is rebuke okay great yeah so don't don't let the devil you know sometimes we just welcome the devil yeah please come you know do whatever you want to do do you want a cup of tea <laughs> don't play you know friends with the devil when you are noticing this is not right go against it okay jesus said no i have given you the keys of the kingdom use it bind loose so that's the job of us believers uh, we cannot tolerate the devil and his works okay so all right let's uh, pray and close for today and we will come back to discuss more in the next class um uh, shon can you please pray since you have the mic uh dear heavenly father thank you very much for gathering us all here for this, uh, for this destiny heavenly father thank you very much for helping us understand sin much better heavenly father thank you very much as i help you understand 
about uh, how to defend against demonic powers any father thank you very much for speaking through my many father and uh, heavenly father please help us to keep all that we learned in our hearts and our minds any father and uh, please help us use it mightily any father as we go forward any father and please help us to learn new uh, more new things in ma'am's class any father in jesus name we pray amen 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 thank you everyone for connecting we will meet again next week uh, bye for now thank you